We've talked about a few genres of content that you might want to create on YouTube, but how do you get noticed? How do you grow from someone with five views to an online celebrity that conventions and others will beg to work with? Whether you want to stay casual or become a professional, my name is Pegasus Pitch of Pitch and Magpie Productions, and I'm here to give you 10 tips to improve your YouTube channel. Number one, commit to your channel. Before we give you any other tips, we have to start with a harsh truth. As Civil said last week, Getting noticed on YouTube is hard. Your goal when you start off is to figure out how you are going to stand out among the thousands of channels that have been creating content for ages. You simply can't wait for the best or most popular channels to stop making videos. If you want to be making videos for a while, you're going to have to commit to your channel. That's the entire point of YouTube subscribers. They want to know when your next video comes out, and if you go on hiatus or publish a few videos, ask for subscribers, and then drop off the face of the earth, it will be harder to be taken seriously when you come back. Obviously, no one is going to start off as a YouTube star. Even those who have a massive amount of subscribers still have day jobs or college to keep them busy, but they still upload anyway. It's this commitment to creation and desire to continue that makes fans respect and want to follow you. Number two, prioritize your strengths. So you've told yourself in the mirror that you want to post videos for a while, but you're lacking the confidence to start. There are so many genres of content and even more genres within those genres. So what do you even do in order to acquire that horse fame? The best place to start is to play off your strengths. Maybe you can't voice act, but you have a working knowledge of TV tropes or the trends that My Little Pony has taken over the seasons. Or you don't like to think too hard about writing or themes and prefer to act by bringing a comic or fanfic to life. The best content creators start with a niche or their specialty and build off of it. Don't, and I repeat, don't start with a big project unless you're really passionate about it. You're going to have some popular videos and some videos that die on arrival when it comes to views. And having nothing but seven videos on one fanfiction reading or analysis subject will bore your potential audience quickly. To put it simply, find what you're good or passionate about. Work on it until you don't suck as much at it. And then, if you want, move on to other genres and practice with those until you suck less at those genres too. Content creation is simply working hard until you suck less than you did before. From art, to videos, to fan fictions and animation, everyone will agree. Number three, maintain a schedule. All right, you've watched all the tutorials, grabbed all the equipment that you can afford, and made a bunch of videos and put as much effort as you could into making them interesting and entertaining. Now you want to dump them all onto YouTube and have the world smothered underneath your talent and weep as they watch every single one of your videos, right? Wrong. Posting every video at once will most likely lose you subscribers since your fans will think you're spamming them or you didn't work as hard as you did. All of the successful channels start with a schedule and plan ahead to make sure that it's maintained. Whether you want to post every day, week, or month, keeping your schedule consistent can only be positive for your channel. You aren't spamming five videos a day for your fans and losing subscribers. You'll have a backlog just in case something happens. And you'll brighten up your fans' day if they know that you have a video coming out every Tuesday. Once you have a schedule down, you can plan around special events or additional videos that you want to add to your channel. Obab Scribbler's Month of Love? That was planned months in advance. If you keep your schedule realistic but ambitious, your fans will see your passion and respect you more than they already do, which makes it easier for them to subscribe to you. Number four, know your analytics. This is a little hard to explain, but we'll try our best. On YouTube, you have an analytics page that explains almost everything about your viewers. YouTube keeps hold of every second that you watch a video. When you click away, you get the idea. All of that information is put onto this page. There isn't enough time to explain every single category of your analytics, but keep your eyes on the audience retention, demographics, and likes and dislikes. Audience retention is what we mentioned earlier, how long someone watches your videos. If your retention is very low, then that probably means that you have to change up how you're doing your video. Maybe your voice doesn't draw in the listener and they go elsewhere. Or something in your video is distracting the viewer enough to close it. There are a myriad of ways that someone could stop watching you. Like it or not, attention spans are shorter than they used to be. And like we said, a better video could be grabbing the audience's attention. Demographics is what it sounds like. Who watches your videos? If you have a younger audience, Try to avoid using Shakespearean words or spend 25 minutes explaining why Pinkie Pie is best pony. If you have an older audience, try to avoid being obnoxious and loud. There's nothing wrong with catering to your audience. And knowing who watches your videos can help you expand into different genres. If your audience would like fanfic readings right next to your comic dubs, you can transition into doing those with ease. Likes and dislikes is obvious. 
Some subjects won't be liked by your viewers. Maybe you didn't present a video correctly or came off as abrasive in one of your analysis videos. The fans will tell you whether you did or not. While it's safe to beware the comment section, likes and dislikes can affect your channel way more than a good or bad comment will. On a side note, see where your videos are being shared or where they are being watched from. If your audience mainly uses a phone, don't rely on annotations since those don't show up on a phone. Mobile users might also like shorter videos. Maximizing your analytics is a balancing act and one of the hardest things to do correctly. Once you master it, your presence on the internet can only go up. Number five, always be improving. This one is obvious, so we won't spend too much time on it. If you are focusing on your strengths, then your viewers are going to understand that you aren't perfect at everything. Not everyone can voice act or analyze something in an entertaining manner, but it is your job as a content creator to strive to get better with each new upload. YouTube is very competitive and constantly changing, and I can guarantee that everyone else is improving if you aren't. While your fans might be okay with the same style and content over and over, Staying the same over a long period of time might damage your subscribers in the long run. Soon enough, people will get bored of you and unsubscribe for someone who's more entertaining or has a better mic or adds music to their fanfic readings. However, I also want to warn you against improving your channel for improvement's sake. There can be too many cooks for your channel, and people will most likely unsubscribe if they feel that you've changed for the worse or stop trying to improve. For most fans, it's obvious if you don't have the passion to make videos anymore but still do it for the fame and money. Number six, collaborate often. Variety is the spice of life and status quo is the starch. Everyone is going to be following you for what you bring to the table, but a lack of variety in your videos will eventually bore your fans. Throughout the last three weeks, we've told you to collaborate because it's one of the best ways to get your name out there. And eventually, you are going to need to work with others anyway. While you can do all the male and female voices for a fanfic or comic dub, having another actor to work with you and in a prompt fashion, will only raise the quality of your video. We have more information on collaborations in our 10 tips to get into voice acting, but here's the gist. Be fair with the amount of work that you're giving to your partner. Be fair with the deadlines. Don't ask to collaborate until you have a few videos under your belt. Finally, spotlight your partner at the end of the collaboration, or tell your fans if you are on someone else's channel. If everyone wants to work with you, it raises your credibility and makes you look more professional. No one wants to work with a bully or a flake who signs up for something but never turns in their work. Use common sense and you're golden. Number seven, be aware of feedback. We mentioned to be careful of the comment sections in Silver Quill's video, but a lot of the time, it's all you have as feedback. While you can set up a Twitter and use that as your method to communicate with fans, you'll get most of your feedback from the comment section. Not everyone is going to provide an in-depth summary of what you are doing right and wrong with each video you make. But you can get the gist from your comments a few days after the upload. If everyone thinks your latest video is boring and not what they subscribed for, then consider presenting it differently or trying harder to be entertaining on the next upload. Don't take down any of your videos, even if they are your most embarrassing work. Those mistakes help you grow and remind you what not to do when you record your next video. The comments aren't always negative. If others want you to expand on a genre you're doing or they recommend a fanfic to read, do it, as long as it's manageable. The one thing that any audience loves more than seeing a good video is knowing that they contributed to it. If you're nice to your fans, they will share your channel with their friends or throw your video all over the internet until EQD has to post you. Number eight, improve productivity. Sure, you might have the best videos on the internet, but if you start from scratch every time you make one, it's hard to keep your schedule consistent. Shortcuts are your friend as you edit, because it will save you seconds and even hours over time. All this time that you saved could be devoted to other projects, or used to rest after you've rendered an entire week's worth of videos. As you become more versed in video editing, you'll find that templates help you position pictures and text quicker. If you make a lot of videos that have the same style, such as a fanfic reading or analysis video, you can create templates for the position of your pictures and save them for the next upload. Once you've learned how to use templates and shortcuts, it's hard to live without them. Video editing is one of the most time-consuming parts of making content. Templates and shortcuts help alleviate all the time that it takes, which is a win-win for both your fans and you. Number nine, try to be the first. Being the first to establish a trend can make all the difference on your channel. Let's be honest. Every genre of content in both Pony and all over the internet is saturated. Everyone has their preferred fanfic readers, reviewers, let's players, you get the idea. But what if you are one of the first to make or popularize a genre? 
fanfic readers weren't popular three years ago, and reviewers didn't show up until season three. Whether you like them or not, Digibrony, Brony Curious, and Obab Scribbler became icons of their genres because they were one of the first to do it. The Lost Narrator dominates grimdark readings, and Scribbler is the queen of sad fiction. They didn't acquire this fame by coincidence. These creators found or built a niche, and their variety brought enough interested fans to their channel. It's very possible to be the next king or queen of a genre. How do you do that? Be the first, and be different. If you take all these tips to heart, maybe others will be doing videos about you next year. And number 10, always be professional. The last thing you want is drama, and with the internet, your credibility can disappear overnight. Your YouTube channel is like your resume, and if you're turning in lines for a collaboration way past the deadline or insulting others and their work, you might be recast on the spot. Communication is key when it comes to collaborations and your fans. If you aren't going to be uploading for a while, tell your fans. Don't accept roles that you know you can't deliver on. Vicodin and I have seen many popular actors be replaced because the new blood was more reliable. If everyone loves working with you, your channel will grow exponentially. More creators will collaborate with you, more viewers will see you, and eventually, more people will subscribe to you. It's a simple plan. Now put it to the test and go make some videos. Hey guys, I just want to give a shout out to Pegasus Pitch for providing his voice and insight on how to be a bigger and more professional YouTube channel. If you like comic dubs and other voice acting shenanigans, make sure to give him a subscribe. With this, the 10 tip series is closed, at least for now. Do any of you want some tips on other forms of content, whether they are YouTube related or otherwise? Let me know in the comments. Thank you very much for all of your feedback and to everyone for taking part in these videos and the National Pony YouTube Month. I'll see you all soon. A bag of Ikeda now.